joining us now is RG Arginica Genix with a new style style. Oh, okay. no, you didn't. <laughs> How with details of stories channel on radio. I was, I was. OG, <laughs> you have, your hairstyle is going to be trending. No, Dr. Martin's glasses are trending. That's what I'm trying to say. You have over 200 Dr. Martin's glasses. OG. So let me tell you what it is. Yes. Tell us. We don't go green. Hey, we don't hey, go I green. <laughs> so this year I decided I'm not green. I'm doing uh -huh. a new hairstyle. Well, uh -huh. no. well all right. <laughs> Let, let's calm down. Yeah, Good morning to you viewers. Let's see how we fix this show. We have limited time, guys. Come on. Oh, yeah. Good morning Good to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In Denmark, tens of thousands of people trooped out on Sunday to watch King Frederick X succeed his mother as the monarch of Denmark in a historic moment for the nation. 83-year-old Queen Margaret, who was the world's only remaining female sovereign and the first Danish monarch to voluntarily abdicate the throne in over 800 years, revealed her unprecedented decision to step down during a live televised address on New Year's Eve. King Frederick was joined by his four children and wife, Australian-born Queen Consort Mary, as he delivered his first speech to the people, stated that his task of becoming a unifying king of tomorrow is something he has approached all of his life. In Italy, a viral video of more than 150 men clad in black and raising their right arms in a fascist salute in central Rome elicited outrage as the Italian constitution banned fascist ideology, but the outrage did not extend to the office of the Italian Prime Minister, Giorgia Meloni. The event, which is now under investigation by Rome's special anti-fascism police unit, took place on the evening of January 7th to mark the 46th anniversary of the Aka Laurentia massacre when three young neo-fascist militants from the Italian Social Movement, a party through which Maloney first entered politics, were killed. Maloney, who wasn't at the commemoration event, addressed the opera by branding the backlash and the calls for her to ban neo-fascist groups, attacks on her government. In Nigeria, the chief of defense staff, Christopher Musa on Sunday, in commemoration of the Armed Forces Remembrance Day, urged troops of the Nigerian army to remain resolute in defeating all security threats, stated that the efforts and dedication of the troops in defending the country will never be in vain. The Armed Forces Remembrance Day, celebrated today, January 15th, is to honor the servicemen and veterans of the Nigerian Army. Musa also expressed appreciation to the troops who sustained injuries while discharging their duties to the nation. Under sports, the Super Eagles of Nigeria played a 1-1 draw with Equatorial Guinea on Sunday in their opening game of the ongoing Africa Cup of Nations in Ivory Coast. 25-year-old reigning African footballer of the year, Victor Oshiman rescued a point by scoring the equalizer at the Alassane Ouattara Olympic Stadium in Abidjan. The Super Eagles will face Ivory Coast in the second group game on Thursday, January 18th. Then, Afrobeat sensation Yemi Alade, popularly known as Mama Africa, performed at the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations opening ceremony at the Olympic Stadium in Ivory Coast over the weekend. The 34-year-old singer, draped in a green Ankara print ensemble, teamed up with Egyptian rapper Mohamed Ramadan and Ivorian band Magic System to perform Aquaba, the official anthem for AFCON 2023.
a glorious moment for Yemi Adalade. She always wanted to uh, perform at uh, a sporting event. Yeah, Congratulations yeah, to her. Sure. Well, let's begin what's trending with reactions trailing the Supreme Court rulings and governorship appeals involving eight states of the Federation over the weekend. The Apex Court berated some justices of the Court of Appeal over the quality of their judgments in the governorship election petitions brought before them, describing the judgments as perverse. In three separate judgments, the appellate court justices had voided the election of Governors Abba Yusuf, Khaled Mutfang, and Dauda Lawal on grounds of alleged unlawful nomination and sponsorship and deduction of alleged illegal votes. The Apex Court justices regretted that despite several decisions of the Supreme Court, the tribunals and courts lacked the jurisdiction to dabble into internal matters of political parties, some justices could still go ahead and sack a winner of an election on grounds of political parties, primaries, nominations, or sponsorship. Well, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Michael Zuckerman, who was on our nightly news program, Newsnight, said the Supreme Court spared no words in criticizing the rulings of the appeal court on the governorship elections disputes, stating that the apex court used judicial koboku to flog the appeal court while giving verdicts on the matter. The Supreme Court today spread no words. They used legal and judicial koboko to flog the court of appeal for what they termed miscarriage of justice, perverse judgments. In many of the cases, particularly in the Plateau State, two senators' position were reversed, three House of Representatives were reversed, about 11 House of Assembly were reversed. If all these cases have gone to the Supreme Court, all of them will have their seats retained. On what ground were they reversed? The Court of Appeal surprisingly was talking about saying PDP had no structures in Plateau State. When the PDP structures, membership of a political party of the PDP, um, uh, nomination, congresses, primaries, when did they become part and parcel of matters that the, the court can have jurisdiction? Today, the Supreme Court said not even the election tribunal had jurisdiction, let alone the, uh, the, the Court of Appeal, and they voided the decision on the governorship. They would also have voided the decision of the two senatorial candidates, the three House of Reps, and the 11 uh, House of Assemblies. Injustice has been done to them. What is the remedy now? Michael Zokome stated what a lot of Nigerians and even lawyers have said. I mean, they are even saying that the collation of results in elections in Nigeria end up at the Supreme Court, which yeah. shouldn't be. I mean, the Supreme Court is taxed with so many issues, not, you know, ju judgments on, on results. Let me take uh, Atiku's tweet. Uh, he wrote, the Supreme Court's decision represents a significant victory for the people of Bauchi, Plato, Akwaibom, and Zamfara states, and is undeniably a triumph for constitutional democracy. I extend congratulations to Governor Abba Kabar Yusuf of Kano State, of the new Nigeria's People's Party on his commendable legal victory. This moment also provides an excellent opportunity to restate my commitment to the idea of a unified opposition. It's crucial for strengthening democracy in Nigeria. I am more than ready ever to lead this endeavor, working alongside esteemed leaders and governors for the betterment of our nation. I mean, in Kano State, the supporters of the new Nigeria's People's Party trooped out in large numbers on Sunday to welcome Governor Abel Kabir Yusuf back to Kano after Friday's judgment of the Supreme Court, which affirmed his election. The governor was received by the crowd at Kwana Dongara amid singing and dancing. Let's take a look. <laughs>
Well, in Lagos, there was jubilation across the state as residents and party supporters trooped out in good numbers to celebrate with Babajide Sonwolu after the Supreme Court affirmed him as governor of the state on Friday. Sonwolu, who returned from Abuja after attending a special meeting of APC governors with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, was welcomed by his deputy, Dr. Obafemi Hamzad, members of the State Executive Council, party chieftains, party faithfuls, and well wishers amid pomp and pageantry at the State House in Marina. <laughs> in Eboin State, Governor Francis Iwifuru was seen in a viral video celebrating his victory at the Supreme Court, displaying a rare dance move. Let's take a look. That man has beat you, and also, I mean, he's going to be competing now with Governor Adeleke. We now have no, another no, no, no. Governor, have a governor, a dancing governor. I, I mean, have to with him, but no, you that, will. That guy is dangerous. I mean, look at that. That's What's what that called? Call I heard grass grasshopper leg style, <laughs> zamku leg walk. You know, it's not just like Zlatan Ibile, zamku leg walk. The leg walk is very bad, bro. Yes. But congratulations to all of them. All but of real them. quickly, yes, yeah. I think the point has been made very well by um, Abiodo no Onikoko today. And he cite two different case laws at which they can still seek redress. They can summon the Supreme Court on jurisdiction to be able to get an inquisition on this and get clarity on this. I feel all hope is not lost. But it's also a big indictment on the judiciary. And to, only to think that most of those appeal court, one of particularly of those appeal court judge, has gone ahead now to the Supreme Court. And he also said, let's make a clear call on the president too that they must be able to review things like this and review that even the appointment of that court judge on, on the higher court. But congrats to all the winners. Mm -hmm. I am happy and at rest as regards Kanu. Mm -hmm. oh, we all know bad. how Kanu yeah. would have been if he had not mm -hmm. gone in the place of justice. Absolutely. But most importantly, we should not make our democracy be subject to judges. That's an indictment on our democracy. Absolutely. Well, all right, shall we take another story then? Billionaire businessman and philanthropist Femi Otedola, who last week donated 1 billion naira to the Lagos Security Trust Fund to address urgent security concerns in Lagos, has returned to Forbes Africa's richest list, boasting an estimated net worth of $1.2 billion. The figure positions Otedola as Nigeria's fourth richest individual. Otedola, who is the chairman of Gerigu Power PLC and a director of FBN Holdings PLC, had a noteworthy year in 2023, securing the position of the third richest investor on the Nigerian exchange, following billionaires Abdul Samad Rabiu of Bua Group and Aliko Dangote. This recent entry would mark the third time Otedola would be appearing on the Forbes Billionaires list. He made his debut on the list in 2008 when he became the second Nigerian after Dangote, Africa's richest man, to be included on the global Forbes list. At the time, Otedola was the largest shareholder of fuels distributor African Petroleum and owned Xenon Petroleum, which dominated Nigeria's diesel sector. Forbes highlighted Otedola's stake in Girigou Power PLC, Nigeria's first 
publicly traded utilities companies, as well as his offshore cash holdings, extensive international real estate portfolio, and shareholdings in two of Nigeria's largest commercial banks, Zenith and FBN Holdings, as assets contributing to his fortunes, earning him a place on the highly coveted list. I mean, the billionaire last week, we talked about him, the billionaire that keeps giving, and now Forbes have placed him on the list. He's the fourth richest individual. And guess what? Mike Adenuga has surpassed Boa. Mike Adenuga right yeah, now is now on the second list. I mean, congratulations to Otedola. Guess what? He's not green this year. Yeah. He's not, he is not, not at all. green. Congratulations to Femi Otedola. The well, power of very good investment. Absolutely. Yes. Geregu, yeah. nobody saw it coming when he yes. made the investment on Geregu. Absolutely. And also First Bank and, you know, other banks. Yes. It's not just, it's not green. It's the power of very sensitive Absolutely. investment. Fantastic. He knows how to pick his investment. He does. Fantastic. He's not green. Congratulations, Femi or Ted Ola. We shall end what's trending today with this video showing the 200 City Choir, a music group that have composed a rendition using the catchphrase. We know go green, which was used to usher in the new year by the young people of Nigeria. Let's take a look. To that choir, they know no green. City choir yes. doing justice to so what I feel. This is what we were saying last yes. week. Spin it and make it good. We've heard very positive things. Absolutely. And this year, obviously, you're not going. Oji, Oji, no go green for anybody because obviously we've yes. seen that it's come to stay. We must embrace it and Absolutely. spin it positively. And congratulations to yes. um, you know, Dollar. Yes. I'm also that both companies grew by 200, over 200 percent in the Fantastic. case of Gerigu and over 100 percent in the case of First Bank. So again. Very insightful investor. Well, all right. We know we agree on the morning show. I'd like to thank you both for your great analysis on what's trending today. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.